Is it art? Or a piece of furniture? A robotic arm shaped in out of a styrofoam cube. In its most basic form, it can be a stool, a side table, um, you know, anything, an object for the house. Uh, but people themselves have come up with an infinite variety of uses, many of which we can't even necessarily guess. It means something to them. This installation is named RoboChop. It creates forms like a 3D printer, only quicker and better. And it's interactive, meaning that users can send their designs to the robot directly. They create their design on a website, upload it, and RoboChop produces it. It takes 10 to 15 minutes. The users can do things themselves, which wasn't possible before. And you don't have to be a designer to make something like this. The inventors of RoboChop are Clemens Weishaar from Germany and Reit Kram from Sweden. Their robot embodies the theme of this year's CBIT. All of the machines are computer controlled and their networking generates incredible respect. What we're doing here is, to a certain extent, an extreme example. We're breaking down all the barriers and connecting end users with the machinery of production. CBIT is the world's biggest IT trade fair. More than 3,400 exhibitors are showing the technology of the future here. Take design. Consumers are becoming producers. This software allows people to turn images into 3D models and to make them with a 3D printer. This new pick to comic app distorts photos and videos. I can act right away without being dependent on others, which gives me a new sense of freedom. This is where Clemens Weisser and Reid Kram have their studio in Munich. They've been called the vanguard of a new generation of digital designers. The duo invented RoboChop here. The biggest challenge was designing the software to control the robot. Software is the material of the 21st century. Computer code is really just a text file containing instructions on how a computer is supposed to process data. And today we're using it to shape products. We're interested in the disappearing line between the digital and the physical. Connecting the digital with the material world was also the motivation behind their R18 Ultra chair. They used sensors to research the forces users exert on chairs. Hundreds of people sat on their test chair and ended up playing a role in the design of the final product. Having sensors involved in the making of things is, uh, it's not only limited to, to race cars, it's now a part of much of our lives. So, I mean, we are sensed uh, whenever we do anything on the net. Even in sports, there's, you know, all these kind of sensors put everywhere. Uh, in this case, the goal was to make the lightest chair possible and to really optimize during the design process. The duo blurs the lines between humans and machines. In 2010, they had messages projected into the night sky by robots. The messages were sent in over the internet by people around the world. The writers of the texts received videos of their personal messages as data files. There were a few rules, no vulgar language, no political statements, and above all, nothing insulting to the Queen, since that's strictly forbidden in England. But as it happened, that was the time when the attempted revolution in Iran took place. So the whole time we received free Persia, free Persia. That was great. That was during the Arab Spring, exactly that time. And you could see how there were things to say that were really important. Back to the CBIT. By the end of the fair, RoboChop will have completed some 2,000 requests by potential customers from around the world. No matter where the user is located, the robot accepts the job, and the resulting product is sent by mail. RoboChop gives us a taste of what's to come in design in this digital age.